Good evening, everyone. Um, very nice to meet you. Uh, I'd like to say great thanks to CBS for inviting me here, and thanks to all the organizers and the helpers to make the conference possible. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to learn from all you experienced experts of Vajrayana Buddhism. I'm very happy to uh, be here uh, the first time to meet my academic teacher, Professor Mathis and Mrs. Mathis, and my Dharma teacher, Kanchu Rinpoche, both for the first time face to face, uh, and all the lovely new friends here, all the Dharma sisters and brothers, what a good karma. Thank you. Um, I'm the last speaker today. I think you may be exhausted, so um, let's talk about something relaxing and interesting. Uh, sorry. Okay, my uh, research approach will be relatively a uh, cultural one instead of focusing on the philosophy and the practice of Vajrayana teachings. Um, modernization and commodification of Tibetan daily life have been so long challenging Tibetan culture and the local community. Meanwhile, the de development of uh, technology made it possible for the Tibetans of richer classes to reduce and circulate their raw video footage and facilitate a new wave of uh, independent film and video production among Tibetan artists and intellectuals. We can see all of these videos show the local efforts to reconstruct and recover Tibetan culture and identity against external changes. And the video recording of Tibetan Buddhism is the essential practice at the core of all types of Tibetan video production, despite sometimes not being directly shown. In China, the history of Tibetan a Tibet-related film can be traced back to the earliest two documentaries about Tibet in 1975. From 1953 to 2005, there were a number of Tibetan-themed movies and documentary films about Tibet. The so-called Tibetan-themed movies are produced by Chinese ethnic directors but talk about Tibetan stories. Only a few of them employed Tibetan actors and the Tibetan language. In the late 20th century, Kenti Rinpoche's The Cup triggered the global popularization of Tibetan language feature movies. They encouraged the independent native Tibetan directors to create their own films works. At the beginning of 21st century, a group of Tibetan filmmakers emerged from a number of major Tibetan electors from Amdo. They started to create documentary and feature films from the perspective of insiders, with a native Tibetan production team using the Tibetan language as the dominant language in their works. This movement is called New Wave of Debate by themselves. Okay, since the time is limited, I cannot go through the uh, biography of these two directors and all of, the, uh, all of their works but I highly recommend you to watch them. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about the uh, uh, documentary of Doji Seiren. At the beginning of Ani Lacha, Doji Seiren introduces the Nan Nanzong Nanari very briefly as the castle in the sky, an uh, important place in the history of Tibetan Buddhism. The audience may expect a magnificent image of this monastery or an extraordinary story of La Cham. However, an interview between the director and La Cham happens in a small room. As simple as the setting, the conversation carries on in a quite plain and smooth way. Through the interview between Doji Tsehirin and La Cham, we can find the director present a tantric practitioner as an ordinary young girl who may also have personal desires and problems. The reason why La Cham fled away from her family and joined a monastery seemed not to be anything spiritual, but an escape from her odious family duty to herd their yaks. When La Cham did her duty during religious celebrations, she was too busy to eat dinner and sometimes got, got so hungry and angry. From these words, we can just think about her as an ordinary young girl. Doji's uh, documentary films follow, followed a similar mystic style, 
which his poetry is famous for, not in terms of textual obscurity, reference, or even lyricism, but in the avoidance of moral judgment of uh, or a resolution-rich narrative. Indeed, um, Doji Tseren has never set an image of what a debating nun should be in presenting the interview with La Chang. However, the audience will be shocked when the film uh, char character characterizes La Chang's achievement of yoga practice. La Chang does not deny that her yantra yoga practice once cracked the walls. And when he practiced Richen in the mountains, whether it's rainy or cold, she must practice ignoring her pain. Can you imagine that the girl who, could, who cannot endure the heat when herding or hungry when doing her duties in religious celebrations has achieved such an extraordinary state in her tantra practice? And there's another noticeable attitude towards Tibetan Buddhism in Lacha's talk, the, feminine, uh, the femininity in Tibetan Buddhism. Lacha wants to be reborn as a monk in her next life, and even pray, prays for that. She thinks that she is very devoted in this life, so she will have a favor, favorable reincarnation. This documentary does not explain why Lacha prays for so, but there, there are some clues in some of the Mahayana texts created by male authors. They suggest that women could not uh, attend enlightenment, at least in this life, and propose a condition on women's way of becoming a high stage of uh, Bodhisattva or Buddha, which is changing their gender to male in the next life. Although, uh, although Tsongkhaba affirmed that the path to awakening was open to was open to women as well, but is there actually a gap between the, theor 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 the theory and the practice? In addition, when La Cham hesitated to explain, explain why she chose to be a nun, uh, the, director, the director presupposes a reason for her, marriage problems. This may reflect a stereotype of Tibetan nuns commonly shared among lay Tibetans. Since we can also find another similar case in Bema Tseden's latest feature movie, Bluen. Compared with Bema's original novel, he enriched the, char the character of Shangchu Joma in the film. Joma once fell in love with a school teacher and broke up with him because of some misunderstandings. Bema does not cle clearly show what happened in the storyline of Joma. But the, but, the but the audience can sense that she had aborted a baby in the failure of her relationship and chose to become a nun in order to redeem her uh, deadly sins of killing. In this character, the image of Buddhist nun is treated again as an alter alternative to a failed or even a sinful lay life. Last but not least, when the TV is showing the news of the first test tube, test tube baby in the world, the grandpa in the family, who is representing the traditional Tibetan culture and thought, says it is sinful. And when Joka gets her false pregnancy, their lama tells the family that the baby is a reverse of the grandpa. Religion becomes a kind of conservative power to pursue Joka not to give up her pregnancy. The longer version of the silent holy stone in Pema Tseden's first major uh, feature movie, it is an observational study of three days in the life of a young Tibetan monk who wants to watch the t television series Journey to the West, Xiyoji. In his village, the locals watch a performance of the traditional Tibetan opera, Jimmy Quinton, an ancient, debate, uh, an ancient Buddhist parable of a king who gives his wife, children, and even his eyes away as an act of charity. But the boy is more interested in watching television instead of the traditional opera. This feature movie starts, starts to consider the tension between modern and the traditional, the urban and the rural, the Tibetan and the outside worlds. Bema Tseden takes the commodity uh, as the locus of disruptive desire and modernity 
In this film is the video cassette of the television drama. The Holy Stone shows the consumption of a commercial video and the pursuit and, and the pursuit of the monastic life as, an, as intention, but not conflict. As the director put it, some critics have interrupted my movie as showing the conflict between tradition and modernity. This is a misunderstanding. It deals with their intermingling. Originally, uh, Bema Tedden decided to continue the story of Holy Stones, but the censorship of authorities denied his proposal because it touched on too many religious issues. In that case, Bema had to change the theme of his second feature movie and could only present Tibetan Buddhist culture at a token level. The search uh, delves deeper into the social space of contemporary deba debate, showing that Buddhist values were, uh, are being challenged in modern terms. In, in a nightclub, when the team of filmmakers was interviewing a man for the role of Jimmy Quinton, he tells them that he played Jimmy Quinton before, but stopped recently because, as he says, I dislike the role of Jimmy Quinton. What do you think Jimmy Quinton exemplifies? Jimmy Quinton offered his own eyes to others. This is his choice. However, why did he have to give his wife and children to others? Where did he get the right to do that? Who gave him the right? The mood of this scene is saturated with overlooming flashes of disco lights, loud music, and the clinking uh, noises of beer bottles and wine glasses. According to Bema Tedden, the history and the spirituality of Buddhism are developed in and challenged by the modern secular and consumer world. As we have discussed in a previous slides, both Doji and Bema tend to present the image of debate and Tibetan Buddhism in an impartial way, without judging or coming on or, or, or committing or commenting on any social acts or personal behaviors. They both internationally avoided showing the uh, exoticized exotic, image of debate, but rather emphasized the, the basic condition of people in debate as well as their ordinary emotion, emotional life. In addition, there's another common tendency of Doji and Bema. This, they reduced their positive descriptions of Tibetan Buddhist elements in their films. They both put Tibetan Buddhism as the central background in their first two film works. However, Doji Tseren uh, gradually moved his focus to the ordinary Tibetan norms in the natural and social changes of their environment. Similarly, in Pema Tseren's Taro, he nearly did not present any specific sense of Tibetan Buddhism. But ironically, he makes the protagonist Taro recite Mao Zedong's political essay, Serve the People, fluently in Mandarin Chinese with a tone of reciting Tibetan Buddhist mantras. And Taro cites the content, content of, the, of the essay as his own moral standard in his life. It may reflect the absence of religion in modernization of debate in China. The shift of their focus from Tibetan Buddhist cultures to the real, 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 realistic daily life of Tibetans may be caused by a self-conscious conscious, conscious choice of the same or increasingly strict censorship or a reconsideration of the role of religion. Pema Tedan has uh, in his latest film, Bloon, has presented the uh, Buddhist concept of reincarnation as one of the conservative forces against the fem female Tibetan's right to abortion. Whether these modern uh, Tibetan directors have started to rethink the role of Tibetan Buddhism in their native culture from different view viewpoints or not still remains a question mark. But we can look forward to their future works and wait to find out how they will present Tibetan Buddhism in different approaches. Thank you.